And we've hatched a couple batches of chicks this year and we're just gonna kinda show you our setup here, how we hatch our own chicks. Um, we take five or six hens, brought a rooster in and I put him out there at 10 in the morning, let him be with the hens till it got dark. And I did that for 10 days and that'll give you fertile eggs on about the third day after the, the first time you put them in, that first day, two days later, your eggs will be fertile. And then uh, the eggs will remain fertile for up to two weeks, maybe even three or four weeks, but really pretty good for two weeks. And if you can't keep a rooster at your place, this year I brought a rooster in, it got dark, then I'd go catch him and put him in the shed where he can't, people can't hear him crowing in the morning, put him back out. So I get my fertile eggs that way and I don't really have to keep a rooster here and I don't have to pay anybody for fertile eggs because my neighbors don't like crowing roosters, but I don't have any problems if I do it that way. I bought this Octagon 20, and uh, I really like it. It is kind of expensive. It's three, four hundred bucks. This is the cradle. This little thing right here just rocks back and forth and tips the cradle back and forth like this. This side is just a rest pin. Thing sets in that cradle, so instead of it turning inside the incubator, it turns on that cradle and it just rocks it back and forth. So the turner spins it this way and then it'll rock it back the other way. So if you look at this, if you don't have a turner, turner what makes this incubator nice, then instead of opening it up to turn all the eggs, all you gotta do is roll it like this. There, you turned all the eggs. Then three or four hours later, six hours later, however many times you're gonna turn the eggs a day, you come back and you roll it back this way. That's how simple it is to turn all the eggs. You don't have to get in there and turn every single one by hand like you do a lot of those incubators. Here's a little vent. Um, the first few days, this vent can be closed. Uh, as time goes on, the more the chicks develop, the more gases they give off and the more ventilation you need. So by the time you're about ready to hatch, you need to open. And so I've got all the eggs in here. And every three or four days, I do have to open this up pull the eggs out and then just pour some water right in one of these only ever fill one in this you can see because we've been messing with it we've spilled some water up here so the humidity will be pretty high in there for a little bit but but that's okay these these slide in and out these things so you can judge which size of eggs you want if you got smaller eggs you can move this over if you got larger eggs you can move it over i had a couple of ring neck pheasant eggs so i decided uh, i'll just Stick them in the end where there's some room and see if my ring neck eggs are fertile. They've been in here for only two days. So we're gonna shut the light off and we're gonna candle a couple and see if we can see anything yet. If there's anything at all developing, it's in these lighter eggs, you'll be able to see better. And of course you can see, that is a fertile little chick right there. So there's a germinal disc right on top of the yolk. You can see the little chick developing right on top of that little dark spot. There's actually a circle of blood veins out around it too. I don't know if you can see them or not. If you can a little bit. So that's what it looks like when they first start developing. These eggs have been in the incubator for two days. So I wait for about seven days, candle them all, anything that's not developing, I toss. Anyway, so that's that one. So if we look at a darker egg, like this brown one, it'd be hard, maybe harder to see. However, you can see it on the top of that one, oh, too. Oh, wow, yeah. See that? Good. So that, that egg's fertile, too. So we'll pull one more light one and look. The lighter the egg, the easier it is to see. So here's a different one. Oh, and you can see. So on this one, you can just see the little V of blood vessels. That means it's it's fertile, too. Yep, that little you see some there. blood vessels going, but the, the little chick's not right out against the edge where you can see it. It must be rolled off this side a little bit over in here so you can't see the chick but you can see the blood vessels that would be attached to the chick right there yep there's a germinal disc that sits right on top of the yolk and that's where that where the egg and the sperm are that's where it's been fertilized so when it starts developing that develops on that yolk and the yolk is the food for the chick there hasn't been a rooster with these eggs for two weeks yeah, there hasn't been a rooster with the hens for two weeks so that's how you candle them i just use one of these just a regular flashlight. You can get this 9,800 milliamp. So it's one of the really bright, bright LED lights. It doesn't put off much heat, so you don't run any risk of overheating your eggs while you're trying to look at them. These are 10,000 lumen or something. The door, they're bright. Here's a calf hutch that we've converted into a little bit of a chicken hutch. And we just take the, the chicks and we're putting them in there and letting them grow out. So it's a brooder for the young little ones. I put that in there like that and you can see 
I put a board across the top to hang the lights. And these little guys, they're a couple weeks old and doing good in here. Another two weeks and they'll be ready to leave here and go out into the coop. They'll be, be able to keep their heat. It's a pretty good setup. All you gotta do is mount a board on here, put some hinges. I like this up here so it makes a barrier so they can't just run out when you let the thing down to reach in. I just put a latch, screw the board on top right here, put the latch on, put something through there like that, and you're good to go. This is where they end up, my I've laying hens. i got some good laying hens there, and I've also got some of the game fowl. I like crossing them. They make better mother. If you want to use the chicken for an incubator, these game fowl are really good to incubate, so that's what I keep them for. See the two in the back back there? They're the game fowl type. But I've just taken a dog kennel and wrapped the dog kennel around the front here. So this is just a regular dog kennel with a six foot door and a six foot, six foot. So I bought two panels and one with a door in it. That's the front. Then I bought this four by four cattle paneling for the roof. It's just four inches by four inches. It's heavy duty stuff. Wired it to the top and then built a little coop for the back and it made it pretty simple. Gather the eggs out of my chickens. You want to not hold them for more than 10 days after 10 days they start losing their viability or hatchability um, they say after 10 days each day you lose about a percent per day so the way a hen lays them she will lay a whole clutch of eggs but she doesn't heat them up to over 89 optimum temperatures 99.5 once she goes down on the eggs and starts warming all the eggs up to 99.5 that's when they start developing so that's why they all hatch at the same time when she when it's time for her to hatch her chicks and walk off with all of them. If they didn't do that and they started setting as soon as they laid the first one, they'd hatch one, one every day. And then they can't walk off with all of them at once. So Mother Nature really does a neat thing there. Um, how she's made it so the chickens can hatch a whole clutch of 15 or 20 babies. They are all ready to go at the same time and away they go. Although Even though the hen can only lay one egg per day. So it's pretty neat. So, and then I take them from here, take them inside them in a cool place, some the eggs, somewhere between 50 and uh, 45, 55, 65 degrees, somewhere in there. And I put them in an egg carton. I just till them on a 45 degree angle each time I gather more eggs back and forth. And that kind of simulates the hen going in to lay another egg. If she goes in to lay another egg, she fluffs around and moves the eggs around and that turns them each day when she goes to lay a new egg. So I kind of simulate that gather all the eggs I can get for 10 days and I've bought an octagon 20 incubator um, and it's really nice because it's all contained in one unit for 21 days so your chicks should hatch once you put them in your incubator at 99 and a half degrees in a forced air incubator forced air just means your incubator has a fan so it's circulating the air makes it so the temperature is the same whether you're this high in the incubator or this high in the incubator I'm on a steel air incubator course heat rises so it's hotter as you go up so there will be an egg at the bottom of the egg it might be 95 degrees at the top of the egg it might be 102 so they say to to run your temperature about 101 at the top of the egg um, if you've got a still air incubator no circulation of I the like air. the forced air incubators they seem to work a little bit better and I think I have a little better hack rate with it in the incubator 21 days mark it right when you put them in <coughs> When it comes 21 days to the exact hour, if they all hatch hours later, especially if it's a day late, you know your temperature was a little bit cold. If they hatch a day early, you know your temperature was a little bit warm. Now I know a lot of people that like to run them at 99 and a half degrees, because if you raise the temperature more than 103 degrees for 10 or 15 minutes, it can kill your embryo. So it's, your, your embryos can survive a little while at a lower temperature than they can at a higher temperature because um, when the hen normally gets off to go eat every day the eggs do cool down but they don't heat up so mother nature made it so the eggs can cool down and the embryo stay alive sometimes if they've developed for almost two and a half weeks and the hen gets off the eggs they might even be able to survive five or six hours before the hen comes back to set on them and warm them back up. Yep. Get almost to where they're not moving and they, they look like they're dead. The hen gets on there, warms them up, and away they go again. Um, it's kind of neat. I've seen that happen several times. So anyway, 21 days, they hatch in the incubator. You wait till they fluff up in the incubator and then you can take them out and put them in the brooder. Your new food, I like to use medicated. I know some people don't, but 
I lose a few chicks if I don't use medicated chick starter, where if I use medicated chick starter, I hardly ever lose a chick. I put the waters up on a board. Um, so just like a two before, put a two before in there, put your little water up on there. That makes it so when the chicks are scratching around down in the dirt, it has to throw it higher than that two before, higher than the edge of your water before the dirt and feces, I guess, poop gets up into the water. Um, just helps keep the water a little bit cleaner. It doesn't hurt to wash your waters out, maybe with Clorox. Some people will even put one squirt out of a squirt bottle of Clorox in a gallon of water and water bird with that. It doesn't seem to hurt them any, but it keeps the bacteria from growing in your water and possibly making your bird sick. Um, I used to raise quail all the time, and once I started doing that, I didn't lose any more quail. So I'm a pretty big believer in putting a little bit of Clorox in the water, especially if you have trouble in the summer with bacteria growing and your bird's getting sick. Usually that happens after you put the waters in. It goes about 10 days, and your waters get bacteria on them. It starts growing bacteria, and then about at 10 days, some of your birds will start getting sick and start dying, and it's usually the water. It's the problem, the water's contaminated from the bacteria starting to grow on the, on the bottle on the inside. So cleanliness of your waters is a really good thing, and I, I'm, I swear by medicated feed, but you keep the water clean. Raise them up about four, some of your red sex length, which aren't out here right now. They start laying at about four months. Some of your barred rocks, your game hens, most other chickens start laying between six and seven months. Um, if they start laying before winter comes, usually they'll lay all winter, um, especially if they're a good egg laying breed. If they don't start before it gets real cold in the, in the winter, then they'll probably not lay all winter until spring comes and the, the light or photo period of the day gets more than 11, 11 and a half to 12 hours and your bird will start laying again. Um, and then you've got eggs for two years. After two years, your hen's egg production starts going down and that's when I replace mine. And some of you don't like chicken noodle soup, some of you do. At that point, that's when it's time to make the chicken noodle soup. So, <laughs> hope you enjoy raising your chickens. Talk to you later.